Here's what the Transys uh, simulator radar and what a Transys radar looks like uh, when you first uh, power it up. Um, and uh, what we're going to need to do now is uh, uh, get it transmitting and uh, tune it, adjust our gain, um, and then we're going to go through some um, some features here, okay? So uh, you don't have to do this right now, but I suggest you do it. Uh, you're going to want to be on 12-mile scale when you adjust the, the, the gain. That's what the manufacturer uh, recommends. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on 12-mile uh, right off the bat. Now, uh, I'm going to come down and select, select my band. You can be in X band or S band. Select your band. I'm going to leave it in X. The next thing I'm doing, I'm going to come down here and transmit, okay? So uh, now I'm in transmit, and I'm going to go ahead and adjust my tune, okay? So I want you to do this manually, all right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click manual, all right? And, okay, so when I do that, it goes into automatic, but I want you to be able to um, make sure that you can tune this yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back in manual. And then I'm going to left click on the tuning bar. And that's what you want it to look like. You want that lower bar to be as long as it possibly can be. Okay. Um, so as you move your mouse back and forth, all right, uh, that lower tuning bar will get longer and shorter. And when it's at the longest, that's when you're going to have the best picture. Okay. So I'm uh, wiggling my mouse and it looks to me about right there. So now I'm going to left click. Now what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the gain. Okay. Um, and this is when you want to be on 12 miles. So this is when you want to get to there if you haven't done it already. And we're going to do this manually. Again, your radar has the ability to adjust those things um, uh, um, but uh, automatically, but we're going to go ahead and do it um, uh, manually. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the rain down. I'm going to turn the C down, okay? And now I'm going to go ahead and click on the gain. Now, what I'm going to do is I want to raise the gain, okay, until I get some speckles all the way out, okay? Now, those speckles are not, pro probably not, uh, you might think those speckles are waves and things like that. They're not. A lot of that is thermal noise, okay? Um, but uh, I get it, uh, I'm, I'm near saturation here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to get rid of those speckles that go out to the edge. I'm just going to have a few speckles, okay? about halfway out of the radar screen, something like that. I'm going to call that good, okay? And I'm going to lock in my gain. Now, the man, now uh, uh, C clutter really only goes out a few miles. So this, you might want to drop your, um, your scale down to uh, three or so miles. And now we can adjust our C clutter, all right? So for my C clutter now, I'm going to start to turn my C clutter up. And uh, here we go. And I, I can see that I've got some vessels around me. And I'm knocking down those waves. I don't want to turn it up so much that I knock out those boats. See, I turned it up all the way. I want to back it down a little bit, okay? Make sure I can still see those vessels. I'll st I, a little bit of clutter around the vessels, not a bad thing. Then you're, you're fairly confident that you're going to be able to see other vessels, okay? So uh, there we go. Maybe just a touch more, and I'm going to call that good. Now, rain clutter is a very dangerous, uh, very dangerous uh, a setting, okay? Um, when you're in automatic tune, you may find that even on a, on a, a day when there's no rain, the, the, the algorithm may put just a touch of rain on. You can do that, but you don't want to put much on unless it's actually raining because this dampens the, uh, uh, this reduces the sensitivity over large areas of the radar and you could wipe out targets at distance. Okay. So, uh, if I wanted to, I might just put a touch, but I would be very, very conservative with the gain. Uh, on a day when it's not actually raining. Okay. But anyway, there we go. Maybe I think, I think I've got a pretty well tuned picture now. Okay. Um, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to choose my pulse. Um, right now it defaulted to medium pulse. Um, I could choose short pulse or long pulse. Oftentimes you're only going to have two choices. All right. But, uh, you're going to go ahead and choose your pulse if you want to, uh, do something other than the default. If you want rings on, come on up here. Okay and uh, click on rings, all right? Um, and um, all right, uh, if you want to, you can turn this enhanced target on. Um, what that does is it's uh, any, um, uh, you can see the whole bunch of, uh, of, of targets actually just got brighter. Uh, it's not adjusting the, the, uh, the uh, it's not like a gain adjustment or anything like that. It's just making anything that's, uh, any target that's on the screen it just makes it sort of like bold, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on, all right? And that's on now. Great. Uh, if I want to suppress my heading line, I do that here, okay? I can suppress my heading line by holding. You can't keep it off all the time. 
uh, it's, you have to actively suppress it. And when you lift your finger off, okay, it comes back up. All right, so I think we covered a much, pretty much all these things over here. Let me just review that. Great. All right, now, I'm going to come over here. Uh, you got relative motion relative. Okay, I'm going to right click. You got relative motion relative, relative motion true, and true motion. Relative motion um, is generally what you want to use for collision avoidance. Um, and, but you're welcome to use whatever you want. But when you're doing collision avoidance, uh, the best thing for collision avoidance is relative motion relative vectors. Okay. Uh, the difference between relative motion relative and relative motion true is um, that you'll have relative trails for relative motion relative. You'll have um, true trails for relative motion true, okay? Uh, and in relative motion, you stay fixed in one spot on the radar. In true motion, you'll have you'll be moving across the screen as well. Okay, so uh, I think you're probably going to want to be in relative motion relative for most of the uh, 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 labs that we do. All right, great. So that's done. I'm going to choose that. Now you got to choose your orientation. Okay. You got heads up, north up, course up. Um, uh, you know, so they each have their advantages. North up is going to look exactly like a paper chart, but if you don't have paper charts, you got Ectus. You can put those in any orientation that you want. You might want to use course up. North up and course up are going to be stabilized. So they're going to be accepting a gyro input. Um, and, uh, so when that happens, I'm going to just go ahead and choose north up. Okay. When that happens, um, this outer bezel here will be oriented to north. If you choose course up, what's going to, if you're uh, up here at the top, your course is going to be at the top. So if you're making 090, you put it in course up, 090 is going to be up here. The advantage of north up and course up is that they are having a gyro input. That means they're stabilized. Heads up is what you're going to default to if you lose your gyro input. And that's when you're going to do manual plotting, radar plotting. Um, uh, and, um, anyway, so you're probably not going to spend a lot of time in heads up. If I wanted to be in a heads up sort of display, I think I would choose course up. Anyway, um, you'll have to review that if you don't understand what I just said. Okay. Now, uh, here's our heading, our speed All right now. Uh, we're not making any way. Okay. But if we were there with our speed, this is where we, um, uh, can figure out uh, what our speed input is. Right now we're log W, which means we're water stabilized. Okay. If I choose nav, that's choosing the GPS. That's going to ground stabilize me. I've got log. Uh, uh, I've got log water log. I've got um, uh, log over the bottom. Okay. I can manually enter my set and drift, and I got this echo reference here. And um, uh, that can stabilize the. Uh, uh, anyway, with that echo reference, I can click on a target. Uh, uh, that I know is not moving, and then um, the radar can calculate set and drift and apply that to all of the vessels and give me uh, true motion, relative vectors, true rack vectors, all that stuff. Okay, so that's that. You're probably going to spend most of your time in ground stabilized, fully ground stabilized with the um, um, uh, GPS. Okay, vectors. So you've got relative vectors and true vectors. So um, let's go ahead and acquire some targets. I think I'm actually going to back down to six mile scale here, okay, to make things all right, so we can see a few more targets here. All right, so um, uh, let's go ahead and uh, I'm just going to acquire, okay, some targets. All right, here we go. All right. I'm not particular, too particular which targets I'm acquiring at the moment. I just want to have some so that we can talk about the vectors, okay? So while that's doing that, uh, um, we have relative vectors and we've got true vectors, okay? Relative vectors and true vectors. And then you got the time there. A one-minute vector really isn't very valuable unless you're dealing with a high-speed craft, okay? So I might put my vectors to six minutes. I mean, you, you can put it to 10 minutes, 12 minutes, six and 12 are kind of, kind of common. I'm just gonna go ahead and put my vectors up to 12, okay? And I got true vectors right now. You notice when it's in true vectors, it's red. And that's just the, 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 the radar reminding you that, hey, you know, true vectors are not the best vectors for collision avoidance. If you try, because it's not obvious, directly obvious, that a vessel is on a collision course with you if you're in true vectors. Whereas if you're in relative vectors, and the vector is pointed at wherever you are on the screen, which at the moment happens, happens to be the center, I know we're on a collision course, okay? Um, if the vector passes ahead of me, 
I know that they're going to pass ahead of me. If it passes the stern, I know they're going to pass the stern. So with true vectors, they're great. They're very useful. But for collision avoidance, uh, uh, relative vectors gives the easiest um, uh, display to interpret. Then you got your trails. Okay, You got short, long, permanent. You're probably not going to use permanent. Uh, if I use trails, I usually use short. Okay, but if you want them longer, you can use long. Remember, we're in relative motion relative. This R in parentheses means that the trails will be relative. If I put that in true, the trails will be true. Okay, all right, great. So now I got my EBL and VRM. I can turn those on. Okay, those two go together. And if I grab right there at that intersection point, I can adjust them. So this target right here, the range and bearing of this target is about the 31 degrees. Okay. It's 31 degrees off my bow, and since I'm in north up, it's actually the true bearing is 31, and my uh, range is about three miles, okay? And I can turn on VRM2 and EBL2. Beauty of the number, I'm going to turn these off here to declutter my screen a little bit. I'm also going to turn off my rings here for a minute, okay? Um, EBL2 and VRM2, these have the ability to be offset. So if you want to off-center, you right-click, you click off-center, okay, and then you can click on the spot where you want it to be, okay? And then if I want to put it back to where it was, I go back center. So, um, you know, that's very useful, you know, uh, uh, and then, uh, you know, if I was, you know, we're heading up here and uh, it's like, oh, uh, stay a quarter mile off of this Raycon here. I could go like this, all right? I could go off center. I could drop it on there, all right? And I'm going to click drop and that's going to uh, geo-reference it. It's not going to move off of that thing. Now I can bring my um, VRM down to, let's say, a quarter mile or something like that. And there, voila, I know if I stay outside of that circle, I'll always be a quarter mile off of that thing. Okay. And I could take my uh, EBL and I could say, oh, and I could actually, uh, uh, this is, anyway, so you can adjust that too. I could even just turn that off if I didn't want the EBL, but I just wanted the VRM. Okay, great. We got that. All right. Um, so let me just see where we are on the list. All right. Uh, let's see. I think I want to get down now to uh, EBL. Da, 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 da. Uh, oh, let's go to center. Okay. So right now the uh, we're in relative motion. So uh, we're going to always be at this spot unless we choose to make that spot somewhere else. So if I come down here and I right click, I can go to max view. And if I'm going north, it's going to drop me down south, and it's going to extend my view ahead of me, reduce my view behind, okay? And uh, I can also, if I want, I can click, you know, and I can drag. I can put myself in various places as well. Uh, I think max view is probably more useful, but this is another feature. If I ever click center, I go back to where I was. Okay, so uh, I just started the... Um, uh, simulation here and you can see now that uh, of the vessels that I acquired uh, um, vectors are starting to show up now okay and now we want to look at uh, target information and then some ARPA features okay so um, so uh, since we've now we've got our vectors so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and pause the simulation again for a sec all right great now here we have our target uh, window here, all right? So right now we are, uh, in this window, there's only one target. We've got all this information about it. We're tracking target two. So target two is this guy, but I'm like, hey, I wonder what target four is doing. I can just click on target four. Okay, well, simulation has to be running for this, apparently. Okay. All right, so I can click on target four. And now you can see over here in my window that I'm tracking target four. Okay. Now, uh, what is my, uh, I'm making zero one five, about three knots. Uh, what is target four doing? Uh, his, uh, course over ground is, uh, uh, well, it's still coming up right now. Um, but anyway, it looks like target four seems to be on a reciprocal course. Um, and, uh, let's just go ahead and, uh, go to true vectors. Oh. Looks, uh, look at that. These guys are all either buoys, okay, or they're vessels that are dead in the water and not drifting, okay? Uh, uh, actually, uh, so, because we're ground stabilized. So, anyway, um, 
There, so this can tell me what the vessel is actually doing, and this can tell me if we're going to hit each other, okay? So uh, anyway, uh, let's see here. So we got a CPA warning. By the way, before we deal with that, if I right-click, okay, uh, in my target window, okay, I can go to multi-target, okay, and I can see multiple targets, and I can have them multi-target by, uh, um, uh, multi-target by, by CPA or multi-target by um, um, uh, by number. Okay, you got lots of the different options there. Now I'm going to go down to ARPA here. Okay, and if I just click, uh, if if you right-click on the ARPA, okay, you can turn uh, uh, you can sort of turn the ARPA features on and off very quickly if you want to uh, reduce some of the clutter on your screen. Okay, so I just right-clicked on ARPA and I suppressed those those vectors if i right click again i bring them back but uh, if i left click i can open up this arpa menu and when you go into there here's your limits and settings so you're going to want to set a cpa limit a tcpa limit a bow cross limit uh, a bow cross dist range limit and a bow cross time limit the larger these numbers are okay um uh you know, out in the open water, I'd want those numbers maybe to be fairly large. If I'm in uh, confined waters, I'd probably want them to be smaller. Okay, but if you turn them completely off and you have a collision, um, that's not going to look too well on you. Okay, first of all, you had a collision that doesn't look too good, but you probably didn't have your limits and settings uh, uh, at the right. Uh, okay, so anyway, you got that. Uh, we can exit out of that. If I want to cancel all my targets, I can do that here. Okay, so you're going to want to uh, set those limits and settings to something that makes sense uh, based on the conditions that you're in. All right, you also have past position, and this is where you start to drop, um, uh, you know, like sort of trail of breadcrumbs, uh, and you can turn that on, and in there you can adjust it. Uh, how often do you want a past position to be dropped? Uh, on your radar, you should be able to choose whether this is going to be uh, relative past positions or true past positions. Uh, I don't really see that feature here. I'm going to assume that whatever you choose here will end up being relative. I think I think in this it might default to true, but I'm not. I don't actually remember. We'll have to do it through experimentation figure that out. But in some radars, when you choose past position, you should be able to choose if you want it to be relative position past positions or. Um, uh, true. And another way of calling past position is history. All right. There's other things here. Uh, I just canceled all my targets there, by the way. I can exit my ARPA. Uh, there's other things here, too. Uh, we, uh, you'll, you know, trial, you're going to want to uh, experiment with that and refresh your memory on that uh, for maneuvers. Okay. Here's brilliance. Okay. Uh, you know, let's say I put my rings back on, but like, wow, those rings are awful bright. Okay. I should be able to somewhere in here, range rings, I could turn those down so that I, maybe I just see them. Okay. They're very bright there. Anyway, uh, you can, uh, just leave those at the defaults. There's also options for night. Okay. There's night one, night two, night three, night. Okay. And then there's a day as well. Okay, so those are sort of default already preset, and then you can adjust those things here too if you want to individualize them as well. Okay, and when you're done with that, you want to um, exit brilliance. Down here in tools, okay, uh, you got a few different things here, um, particularly this add. If you want to add marks onto targets, you can do that. Okay, each time you want to add a mark onto a target, you just click add and you drop it on there. If you if you're like, oh, I made a mistake or I want to get rid of one, you click delete, you click on it, and it goes away. You can delete all. Okay, you got your parallel index lines here. Okay, uh, you can set the range and the bearing on those, and then you can have multiple lines that you can have set up. Okay, and then when you activate them, okay, like I could have line one set up. Okay, and when I, when I, uh, 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 I can set it up ahead of time, and then when I click on it and activate it, it'll show up on my, um, uh, my screen. Okay. We'll have some, you're definitely going to want to be using those, uh, when you're, when you're working and you're going to be using those in some of these labs, if not all of the labs. 